Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome and thank you for joining us. It is Wednesday, the 18th day of August 2010. Congressman Ron Paul is set to join us coming up in 30 minutes from now on a host of issues. The economy, the buildup towards war with Iran. Uh, will he run for president in 2012? We'll be discussing it all and the fact that Obama's approval ratings continue to exponentially plunge and we will be discussing it all coming up today. Let me go over just some of the stacks of news uh, that I have here in front of me. Poll shows opposition to Iraq-Afghanistan wars has reached all-time high. So they're getting ready to expand things into Iran and Pakistan. Uh, speaking of Iran, desperately seeking accommodation, Iran offers U.S. chance to build nuclear power plants. So now... Uh, Iran has offered to let Brazil do it or have the Turks do it or the French do it. Now they're saying, okay, America, you can come in and do this. We need this nuclear power. We only have refineries for half the gasoline we need. And instead of uh, trying to put sanctions on us uh, to where we can't uh, you know, get the gasoline we need, we also want to export oil, crude oil. We need these reactors, so will you please come in and, and oversee the building of them uh, so that you know they're peaceful? And the answer is, of course, absolutely not. Uh, that's not going to be put up with. Uh, some really bad news uh, here militarily. Gulf states endorse military option against Iran. The latest development in the never-ending saga of Iran comes via the Middle East uh, Media Research Institute, which states that according to Gulf states, the military option may be the best option to deal with the Iranian nuclear program as the uh, contra-Iran, no pun intended, axis is now complete. The article also reflected the Gulf states' growing tension and concern regarding Iran's nuclear program and mentioned their proximity uh, to the Bashir reactor because they're loading the fuel rods the next three days and then if it gets bombed, it could be a Chernobyl-type situation. What is scary is that the straw man of military intervention is pretty much presented as a uh, fait complete or an absolute certainty, and alternatives to military intervention are not even considered. And we've got Bahrain, uh, we've got Mumbai, uh, we've got uh, Dubai, excuse me, we've got Saudi Arabia, and many others coming out and saying that they want a military option or they're starting to agree with a military option. And, and you've got all this hype for a strike. I mean, this this is going to be bad for the economy, bad for the dead Iranians and, and Russian advisors that are going to get killed, bad for our country, bad for the economy, bad for our name. We just cannot have another war. We're going bankrupt. And we've got these big global corporations that don't care if we go bankrupt because they loan us the money out of nothing that have dominated and taken control of our country. And it's you know really just that simple. And so the question here is, as a society, are we going to put up with this? We'll uh, talk more about that coming up. On the economic front, U.S. says bankruptcies reach nearly five-year high. That's from CNBC. Uh, here is a, another report from USA Today and CNN Money. Uh, 22 cities in danger of double-dip recession. I mean, the whole country's in a depression. According to the economic benchmarks they used just two decades ago, they've just changed the economic rules. We had Dr. Paul Craig Roberts on yesterday, and he's written an editorial uh, piece for Infowars.com, really a news piece, breaking down how they cook the numbers. Uh, so we'll be talking about that with Ron Paul as well. Uh, also, Tom Fenton saying, why is Washington ignoring its biggest corruption scandal? Too few in Washington have been digging into the scandals behind the collapse of the government-sponsored entities, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, and their role in helping trigger the global financial crisis. And of course, who's at the head of that? Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, Barney Frank, and others. It is all coming up today. Nancy Pelosi wants people investigated that are criticizing the Ground Zero Mosque. We'll be back. This is Alex Jones with five good reasons you should consider buying a solar power generator. 
Number one, new climate legislation could easily double or triple your electric bill. Number two, our new energy czar wants to control how much power your electric company allows you to have. It's true. Total government control of electricity in the name of smart grid technology is coming. Number three, in some areas of the country, the power grid is dangerously overloaded. And now new socialist legislation is only compounding the problem. Number four, dangerous weather is always a threat to local grids. Every year, thousands of families lose their power from weather-related outages. Number five, a solar power generator provides powerful backup insurance and peace of mind. Folks, I really believe in the solar power generators offered by Solutions from Science, one of my oldest sponsors. You can get more information at www.mysolarbackup.com. That's mysolarbackup.com. Remember, the government doesn't own the sun, so go to mysolarbackup.com or call 1-877-327-0365. Listen up, friends. This is Alex Jones with Key Information. The mainstream media is now admitting that we're going into a depression. Don't be dependent on the government for you and your family. You need to get your own supply of high-quality storable foods from eFoodsDirect.com. They're the best company out there, the longest continually operating, with a ton of great food to choose from. It's all fresh, made on a monthly basis, not some old cruddy food they're selling you like some of the other guys. Try their new evacuation pack, a two-week supply of delicious, easy-to-fix food. It comes with all the equipment you need to prepare it. With open talk of a strike on Iran in the next three months, the crisis in the Gulf, and possible evacuations, get yourself and your family ready today. The place to go is eFoodsDirect.com. Go to their website online right now, eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex, or call 800-409-5633. Again, on the web, eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex, or give them a call at 800-409-5633. You may be arrested and or subject to other police action. Tyranny is here. The grim future foretold in 1984 has become reality. It really says that the state is God. The United States is now recognized globally as one of the most oppressive police states on earth. This film conclusively proves the existence of a secret network of FEMA camps now being expanded nationwide. This documentary exposes how the continuity of government program has established an all-powerful shadow state. Police State 4 chronicles the sickening depths to which our republic has fallen. Prepare to enter the secretive world of emergency dictatorship. Body scanners, sound cameras, citizen spies, stage terror, and cameras on every street corner. It's only the beginning of the New World Order's hellish plan. The police state isn't coming. It's here. Secure your copy today at Infowars.com or see it online in the highest quality at PrisonPlanet.tv. Information War. It's Alex Jones. It is Wednesday. We are live the 18th day of August 2010. Congressman Ron Paul coming up in about 23 minutes from now. This will be a key interview. A whole host of important subjects will be able to. Uh, get his report from Capitol Hill on. So that is coming up. And then remember Pastor Steve Anderson? About a year and a half ago, he was driving through one of these checkpoints miles and miles, in some cases 100 miles into the United States, and they wanted to search his car with no due process, and he said no, so they beat him up really bad. Well, uh, a court has thrown out uh, the uh, prosecution of the pastor. So that is certainly uh, good news. And we've seen a lot of police brutality, but also security guard brutality on the news the last few days. And it's this tough guy attitude that police are being taught that if an old lady or an old man or a person in a wheelchair who's paralyzed from the neck down or a deaf person who's hearing impaired, doesn't instantly respond, doesn't instantly follow orders. They can choke you, beat you in the head with batons, uh, or taser you. And a lot of people are dying from this because they've got the police so hyped into this tough guy attitude via fear of the public uh, that uh, it, 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 it's really creating an us-against-them scenario. We don't want that in this country. We want to educate the police. We want to educate the military because in these type of systems, 
as countries and, and societies become authoritarian, the controllers count on there being division between the people and uh, the enforcers. We need to reach out to the enforcers. You know, there's a reason the mainstream media always runs with these police brutality stories and hypes them up. That's done to create psychological division. And, you know, many years ago, I fell into this trap. I'm against police brutality. I'm against how they're trying to warp the police and turn them into thugs. We talk about that. But I would fall into the trap of, at a primitive level, feeling threatened by the police and then approaching it as an us-against-them mentality, falling into the social controller's paradigm. We need to decry out-of-control police behavior, but at the same time, we need to point out they're being given this training and encouraged to do this by the federal government that has basically federalized most of the police departments uh, in their funding and their training across the country. So we're going to be uh, discussing that some uh, with Pastor Steve Anderson uh, coming up in the middle of the next hour. Of course, we'll have nothing but wide open phones uh, in the final hour uh, as well today. In miscellaneous news, uh, all of these reports illustrate the mind control going on in our society. Let me read a few of these headlines and then go back through them. Crew takes baby slapped by mom aboard plane. MSNBC, Southwest flight attendant returned infant before landing, parents not charged. Well, now the full stories come out. The baby was crying, a 13-month-old, a little over a year, and they heard a spat. No one saw the slap on the baby's bottom. Now, I think it's too young to spank a 13-month-old. By the time they're two, they may occasionally need a little bit of that, uh, but mainly sternly uh, talking to them uh, will get their attention in, uh, in, 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 in my experience. Uh, but if a child keeps trying to walk out in the street or keeps trying to turn the gas stove on, uh, they're going to have to get in trouble. But what the system does is it tells you, the social engineers, and, and, and they've written books on this, tells you not to discipline your children even verbally. There have been cases in the United States, Canada, and England, as well as the EU, where children are taken when their parents scream at them. You idiot, I told you don't go out in the street again. I told you not to play in that space heater. And they come and they take them. They take them if you don't vaccinate your children, even though there's no law. They claim that shows a pattern of neglect, even though there's no law to take the shot. And the shot's damaging the children and causing a tenfold increase in convulsions. That's mainstream news just from the H1N1. Major brain damage. Major brain inflammation. So, see, it's okay to put melamine in the milk and give them kidney failure in the uh, formula. It's okay to have most major plastics and receipts and printer ink having bisphenol A massively uh, increasing breast cancer, liver cancer, and of course accelerating early onset of puberty in girls, feminizing boys and delaying the onset of puberty and reducing fertility in boys, accelerating fertility in girls for a brief time, then resulting in reduced fertility and final sterilization. This is all done by design. That's okay. The government pushing Gardasil that they admit doesn't even protect you from papillomavirus uh, that can cause cervical cancer. They admit on the drug insert doesn't protect you. They try to make it mandatory. It kills and maims a bunch of people. That's loving. Girls going into puberty by the tens of thousands every year at the age of three or four or five, by the hundreds of thousands at the age of seven or eight, that's not abuse. No, some ignorant parent being pressured to make their baby stop crying, spatting the 13-month-old. You know, this parent's ignorant, but they're a parent, and that's not abuse. The law says it's not abuse unless you cause harm. But instead, they train people not to show children boundaries, not to discipline children. If you send a child to bed without their dinner, uh, if they're throwing fits or being bad which is a good form of punishment, historically, to really get their attention, that's now a form of abuse. If you take your 10-year-old to church and they say they don't want to go, that's a form of abuse.